Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we'll be looking at Overly Sarcastic Productions, Pope Fights, Frederick II of History Summarized. Now, I don't know what we're getting into here because my entire knowledge was literally in the last video with the Medici's being a thing. So this time around, Pope, that's, that's about it. Also, it's Overly Sarcastic Productions, so it's going to be really fun. Blue's going to do something pretty sarcastic, and he's also going to have a bunch of information that I'm just going to kind of geek out over. So basically everything that ever happens whenever I watch this stuff because it's really fun. I enjoy doing it. So we're going to keep doing that because I find it fun. I know, shocking. More importantly, you guys know this link below to the original video. Hit it up. And I couldn't find any other um, Pope fights because I maybe just can't find them. If this is the last one, let me know because I'll have to just check out another one of their little series because there's so many. It's literally just decision overload at this point though because there's so many and they're all good. Yeah. More importantly, again, link below. Hit it up. Let's get started. I like to think that I know what I'm doing when I make these videos, but sometimes I don't. it becomes very obvious that history is the one in charge here, and not me. See, I had intended to make a video about King Frederick II as a companion piece to my video on Sicily, where I'd use his status as both King of Sicily and Holy Roman Emperor to explore the changing cultural atmosphere of Sicily as it passed from the Norman kings to- Oh, so this is actually during the same time as the previous video where he took over and we were focusing on the current popes as opposed to him when he was flanking them on both sides. Okay. So it's an overlapping piece of history, neat. German ones. Oh wow, cool! What happens when a pan-Mediterranean society of Normans, Lombards, Greeks, and Arabs pivots north towards mainland Europe? What remains? What gets cut? What- I'm pretty sure that is called a monarchy. Specifically, British invasion, but that came later. Yeah. Analyzing cultural nuance, good golly gosh, but as it happens, very little of that matters to us today because what? as I did my research, this video revealed to me that it is actually an episode of Pope Fights. <laughs> so, to take what will be a surprisingly far-reaching tour of high medieval shenanigans, let's do some history. At the end of the 1100s, kingship of Sicily- Why does it sound like when he says, let's do some history? That sounds like he's talking about an illicit drug. You know, considering the, his audience, that might actually be an accurate representation. ...in southern Italy passed by marriage from the Norman Hauteville family to the Holy Roman German Emperor Henry VI of the Hohenstaufen dynasty. He considered Sicily that is a, name. a little more than a shiny novelty, so he plundered it for all it was worth, shipped everything sparkly back to Germany, and brutally punished anyone who resisted. Luckily yeah. for the Sicilians, he died three short years later in oh. 1197, and the crown passed to his infant son, Frederick II, who was slightly too young to govern even by medieval infant? standards, so the responsibility... Damn! Mayhaps Frederick needs a decade or two before he's ready. Ability of I have no idea what accent that should be. ...to their northern neighbor, the Pope. That didn't go so hot, since Pope Innocent III was busy with Pope stuff, so... His name was Innocent? Considering what we know about every previous Pope fight, that name is very ironic, and there was two more before him. I'm sure nothing bad happened. Local German barons were left in charge. They were... Another blessed day of being Pope. I sure hope we have a nice few decades free of international conflict and political hijinks. <laughs> oh, wow. That doesn't happen ever, anywhere, at any time. We're fully uninterested in cleaning up the wreck Henry left behind, and the kingdom was a mess of lawlessness and inter-ethnic violence. Yikes. Luckily for young... So, basically, world history. Got it. Frederick, the royal court retains that multicultural atmosphere, so he grew up in the worldly, sophisticated... Six languages, Latin, Sicilian, German, French, Arabic, and Greek. Damn. That infant is most likely smarter than I am. I fuck up English, and that's the only language I know. Bold of the Norman kings before him. He also enjoyed philosophy, had a mind for science, was insatiably curious about the world around him, and enjoyed falconry more than anything else on God's green earth. So much- Okay, this is beyond being smart. This is a Mary Sue. How is he going to be able to fuck this up? Because- I don't think Blue would do a Pope fight unless someone fucks something up. ...much that he literally wrote the definitive treatise on bird science and hunting with birds of prey. Every huh. chance he got, the man Burp. was out falconing in Sicily. The problem was, after Henry died, the part of his royal domains that he actually cared about, Germany, was in some hot water on account of the multiple civil wars that sprung from the succession crisis caused by Henry's surprisingly early death. Yep. Now, this was not Frederick's responsibility, however, it would become his problem. The Holy Roman Empire had spent... It's literally the exact reverse of his dad, where his dad had everything up here and just plundered down here, where his son has everything down here and is like, fuck up there. And they're, they're fucking up everything up there. The past few decades dancing with the papacy around the question of who was actually in charge, and the plot twist is that it would be neither of them, because local what? lords and princes had gotten really crafty. 
The internal borders of the HRE are utter madness aside from Brandenburg, Saxony, Bohemia, Swabia. Swab yeah, Swabia, that's actually the right name. Bavaria. Ooh, I actually know that one. That's still around. Arles, it's just grains of sand that are literally impossible to meaningfully render at this distance. The substate borders are basically my single town, however, line of sight, this one town. So for the purpose of this video, just imagine everything inside of here is a bunch of itty bitty states rather than any meaningfully comprehensive empire. <laughs> okay, thanks, bye. So it literally just broke down into the situation what happens when you have a kingdom, but it's functionally more of a feudal lordship that happens to have a fealty to a king in name only because it's really run by the lords. Makes sense. Crafty at playing the two off each other in exchange for more privileges and autonomy. Emperors and popes played this game with each other, too, as Frederick's rival Otto bribed his way onto the imperial throne with concessions to papal authority, but when Otto invaded Italy, the pope got spooked and backed Frederick as the new emperor. Oh? What? Still kinda bad for the pope because- Heck, now how do we get out of this one? You don't, you fucked. Frederick sandwiched him from the north and now the south, but he made young Freddy Pinkie promise to go on a crusade, so sure not the worst deal in the world. Given the last crusade had completely failed and the one before that ended up sacking the very Christian city of Constantinople. Oh. So this is during the crusades? I don't know anything about this time period other than it existed, so I'm mostly out of all my depth on this. Constantinople was Christian? Uh, this is probably why it stopped. Whoops. It would be hard to do worse. I mean... <laughs> yeah, accidentally my ass. They saw a big town and stole everything from it properly. I mean, they actually covered that in the previous ones where, hmm, we're paid by plunder. There is said plunder. Much to the frustration of Pope Honorius in particular, and Germany in general, Frederick was distinctly unenthused about his new responsibilities, to go on crusade, and even to be the emperor. So he instead spent all his time back home in Sicily, hanging out with the royal court, and repairing the kingdom that his father Henry had so delicately ruined. In a reversal of trends north of the Alps, Frederick oh? actually restored some sense of royal authority and put the kingdom back in order. He cared- Seriously? Oh. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. If anything, it seems like he's just saying fuck all y'all to the northern section because he's got his section he can manage and is managing it. And he has a buffer state to deal with all the bullshit coming his way. For now, and I'm sure that'll not work out long term. Carefully kneecapped the nobility and confiscated many of their castles, ended the Genoese trading monopoly, which had been slowly strangling the treasury, and slightly reorganized his subjects so they'd be less likely to murder each other. Which, in the past three decades... I mean, to be completely fair, that last one is incredibly important, and most people don't do it because they rise to power through said murder, and then don't fix it before someone else takes advantage of the same loophole. Decades they had very much been doing. Yeah. Frederick granted protected status to Jews and scooted the increasingly rebellious Arab population of Western Sicily over to Apulia, where many worked as blacksmiths and his personal bodyguard. So what? we can see the steady downward trend as the diverse- Oh, so he actually basically held people out and made them indebted to him by not being a horrible, useless dick. I didn't know people in history were allowed to do that. And I mean history up until the last second, and the last second after that. And you can get my trend with this. The diversity that characterized the Norman period was still there, but far more in pockets than it was before. And his relationship with Islam was about to get a little more awkward because as the Pope was keen to remind him, Frederick was still on the hook to go crusade. After marrying Queen Isabella of Jerusalem in 1225, King Frederick of technically Jerusalem now finally had a personal motivation to make the journey. And to get Pope Honorius to quit bothering him about it all the time, Frederick vowed to complete his crusade or face excommunication if he failed. Problem. Although, I think if anyone had any loss of excommunication here, it would probably be him because he's using him as a buffer for everyone else. That is a very empty threat. And he would probably pull, call it on it and then more bullshit would happen. And considering how things have previously gone, the bullshit would very much happen. And he probably wouldn't be smart enough to see that in advance now that I think about it. Ah. Uh, yeah, that probably would happen was Frederick got sick right when he left for the Holy Land, so he sent his army on ahead but went home to Italy to rest up and sick. The Pope considered this a breach of contract so and excommunicated him. He actually now, in did it! to instant damnation, this meant Frederick was now forbidden to actually go on the crusade he was punished for not going on. Frederick still wanted to go to meet up with his army and claim the city he was technically king of. However, the Pope offered Frederick a convenient and straightforward way to escape his excommunication. 
Uh huh. Surrender the kingdom of Sicily to the Pope. Weird that Frederick's only option to save his immortal soul had nothing to do with piety, but- I know! Shocking! It's like it's all a scam! I mean, we've already been over this previously. Every single person with power was a dick, and so far Frederick is the least dickish. The bar is very low, though, so it doesn't actually mean that much. Frederick didn't care what the Pope said before, and he wasn't about to start now, so what? he rested up in Italy. And oh, he just ignored him flat out. To the Holy Lands to get himself that city. Excommunication be Perhaps damned. I have goofed. Literally. So off he goes to the Holy Land on the next boat out, for which the Pope excommunicated him again, but who cares? And he clowns on the entire concept of holy war by negotiating Jerusalem back from the Sultan. The Ayyubid Empire was dealing with enough internal problems that a ten-year truce and the promise to help him against his rebellious brothers was worth trading one city. The local I'd like to point out that this is an actual example of a monarchy peacefully negotiating a form of a peaceful transition of power in Jerusalem. If I need to explain this, we're going to be here all day and it's very depressing. So just, um, yeah, goddamn. Local Christians howled in disappointment as they had failed to take Jerusalem for four decades and got outplayed by the guy who barely even wanted to be there. Yep. Contemporary Islamic sources were likewise very upset about it, but they took Jerusalem back in like 15 years, so they got over it. Which goes to show that even when crusades are astonishingly successful, they still do not actually accomplish anything. It's like it was all a scam. I keep saying that. And that's my personal opinion about the Crusades in general. It's literally just that, well, see, you need to do this for reasons. Yeah, piety. Or, and not just because it keeps the kings out of power by literally throwing them to the front line and not where the Pope can actually not control them. Or whoever was in charge because the previous generations where that wasn't the case was all a bunch of infighting because people in power in the area where they had control would do it. Personal opinion, of course, although I think it's backed up by history. But nobody was angrier than Pope Gregory, who couldn't believe that a filthy excommunicate had conquered Jerusalem. Yep. So he cut out the middleman, and rather than theologically extort Frederick for his kingdom, he just called a crusade and marched on down to take it by force. However, the Pope was a worse crusader than Frederick was, so his army shattered on impact and Gregory begrudgingly agreed to leave the man be. For now. <laughs> the Pope took the breathing- Wait, for now? Pope Gregory will remember that. Oh my god, you're actually just throwing that in there? The Pope took the breathing room Mass to go effect, reform right? the Vatican, or whatever, who cares, but Frederick had more problems, because in 1231, his son King Henry of Germany was berated by the local nobles and princes into essentially granting them complete legal autonomy from the Emperor. In addition to being a colossal blow to the Holy Roman Empire in the long run, this I mean, on the one hand, this is probably better for him personally, because this is a giant pile of you don't want to deal with that. And on the other hand, it also probably puts pressure on the asshole right next to him, who will probably push that power dynamic onto him rather than dealing with himself. Okay, yeah, I see where this can go bad. This was an immediate problem for Frederick on account of losing all of his imperial authority. This act of open rebellion because he wouldn't be technically in Henry getting the emperor anymore. Extremely grounded in 1235 for life. After that, the imperial territories in Germany settled down, but the ones in northern Italy did not. Oh. So, slight backstory, after Grandpappy Frederick I Barbarossa claimed direct authority over the imperial domains in Italy, the city's form- They put on the 1920s old-timey effect? Is even sepia-toned? Oh my god. ...a Lombard League to collectively ask that he shove off. This was great for the popes, who also wanted the emperor to shove off. Germany was far away and didn't matter, but Italy was where they are, and if the emperor was also right there, that's a problem. And now that Frederick II was out on the prowl to reimpose his authority, the Italian cities renewed the League to drive him out, and the pope contributed by once again excommunicating Frederick. Which but wouldn't that be a third... Oh, yeah, because he's just doing it for show, of course. Like, sure, permadamnation is a pretty steep penalty, but if it didn't work before, twice, why would it work now? 
More tactically concerning was that Gregory called another crusade against him and said that any crusader who vowed to fight in the Holy Land could fulfill their crusading obligation by fighting Frederick. At this point, Frederick was so thoroughly done with Gregory's antics that he marched down into the Papal States and camped his army right outside the walls of Rome, where he proceeded to kidnap all the bishops headed into the city. Pope Gregory, surrounded not just on his northern and southern borders, but now within line of sight from his house, died in 1241. <laughs> oh my god, he literally did the I'm not poking you thing, but with actual spear point! Or, well, sword point? Pike point? I don't actually know what weapon they were using as the predominant one at this point. Huh. Oh my god, it's like, okay, you're antagonizing me. No. You just put him in timeout, essentially. Quite possibly out of pure fear. Oh dang, if I knew it'd be that easy, I would have done this 14 years ago. <laughs> or to rob Frederick of the satisfaction of killing him. Yeah. Granted, the man was at least in his 70s, so he probably just died, like, normally, but these two idiots had been at each other's throats for over a decade, so I will only accept the most course. dramatic ending possible. Anyway, with the mission basically accomplished, Frederick hustled back to Sicily to deal with a revolt on account of him having been the target of a crusade, and he almost needed to head back north to deal with the arrival of the Mongols. But lucky for oh. him, for once, they left almost as soon as they arrived, so the Europeans breathed a sigh of relief. Why? This is probably another video, isn't it? Yeah. And dutifully got back to fighting each other. Because yeah. for all the trouble Gregory caused, the new pope, Innocent IV, was an even greater headache. In Seriously? In 45, he declared the still excommunicated Frederick deposed as emperor and branded him a heretic and a predecessor to the Antichrist. Well, of course, renewing the predecessor to the Antichrist. At what point does he just go in, take over, and name himself Pope? Because all the other bishops who could vote for him are literally in his custody. Actually, why hasn't that happened already? I mean, sure, there would be a lot of people upset about it, but at the same time, I has sword is usually a very good example of why people would agree to that. ...the call for crusade. So off Frederick went, again, until his army got completely routed while attacking the city of Parma. Oh. After this stunning defeat, as well as the loss of the imperial treasure, which for some reason he... But for real, is this thing, is this a thing with sieges? I couldn't find anything on, so someone please let me know. Wait, really? Oh, there's just no record on it? That's actually surprising. Brought to the siege, the jig was up and Frederick went home to Sicily. But given how much he preferred Whoa. being in Sicily to anything else, not a bad consolation prize. In the span of half a decade, Jerusalem was gone, Northern Italy was gone, Germany was basically gone, so in his last few years he enjoyed the pleasures of royal life in Sicily. Frederick was a man of many interests, known in Europe as Stupor Mundi, the wonder of the world, but we should especially thank him for filling out the biggest gap in Sicilian culture, literature. The Normans and friends had an astounding talent for architecture, science, oh. and law, but they weren't storytellers. Under Frederick, the Sicilian school of poetry invented the sonnet and pioneered literature in the local Italian vernacular. Wait. Sonnets are from him? Considering how much of Shakespeare is blatantly stolen from history and a lot of it is Italian, and he did use the sonnet format? Wow. Talk about ripples through history. A century ahead of Dante writing in his local Tuscan. By the time of Frederick's death, oh, this is before all that. Okay. It's easy to argue that he lost. The Holy Roman Empire fell into a half-century interregnum and disintegrated in all but name. The Kingdom of Sicily fell back into diet anarchy and was conquered by the French House of Anjou just 16 years later. And those pesky popes got the last laugh after all. So on paper, sure. Pope's one heretical demon tyrant zero. Okay, but the papacy didn't win so much as it just survived. The papacy outlasted Freddy. At great cost, small local states were the real winners. Rome stayed on the defensive for centuries. And frankly, he probably won in the personal sense, like the previous popes, how they all got exactly what they wanted at the cost of literally everything else. He also got exactly what he wanted, and eventually it cost everything else that he didn't care about, and they didn't care about him. So it's like, at the same time, he won in the exact same way by losing, but he also gave a lot of really damn good things, so... Call it a tie? Call it a tie. 
Frederick was their most existentially terrifying foe in centuries. Someone and who was competent who could ignore them. Cared. They were just a hassle who dragged them away from Sicily and got in the way of his poetry and falconing. There's plenty of scholarly debate as to whether he was a Renaissance prince ahead of his time, but to have he been probably could have the been. emperor and an unparalleled crusader, yet still want nothing more than to simply hang out in Italy? Damn if that isn't a mood. Yep. Thank you so much for watching. I feel like this is one of those rare videos that is a highly specific whirlwind of a time, yet also manages to be surprisingly representative of the high medieval period as a whole. Oh. And it's a Pope Fights video. Wins all round. <laughs> Thank you to our Patreon. So I was expecting this guy to be an absolute, complete and utter disaster, and technically, like Blue said, on paper, he was. They lost everything. Things after every bit of this and he died, it, it kind of went horrible. But in actuality, he added a lot to general culture. He managed to do things that no one else could do and actually took back Jerusalem peacefully through negotiation and sitting down and treating people as if they're capable of it, which is admittedly more than most people in all of history can do. <sighs> Quelled rebellions, kept things from falling apart. Honestly, his biggest downside is that he lost in Parma. And even then, he probably is okay with that because like, oh no, I'm stuck doing the thing that I only wanted to do to start with. How horrible. Is this a flex? Is this a flex? I think it's a flex. I think the guy is literally flexing on history by losing by winning. Suffering from success? Yeah, that might actually be the correct way to put that. Or is it... Profiting through failure. Failing up? Could be either way. I honestly don't know which way we'll go, because he's kind of doing both. So either way, if you guys haven't already, there's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. It's Overly Starcast Productions. You know they're good. And whatever I should check out next, let me know. Because as far as I could find, this is the last of the Pope fights. But there's a history hijinks. There's the gods. There's more, just a ton of other stuff. The diatribes, which I personally want to see. I'm not sure if anyone else wants to, but I just love going into the overly detailed aspect. So I want to see that. There's just so much. I just want to figure out what to do next. Because literally, there is decision paralysis right now so bad. I'd appreciate recommendations. <laughs> Either way, I'll see you guys in the next one, and hopefully I make a decision. And if I don't, uh, write a video. Yeah. See you guys then. Adios.